All right, our book today is Giant Squid by Candace Fleming and Eric Roman. It's a great book. You get to read it in kind of a scary voice. Down, down in the depths of the sunless sea, deep, deep in the cold, cold dark, creatures strange and fearsome lurk. Great word choice. With writhing arms and ghostly lidless eyes they glide, some large as buses, some weighing a ton, so big yet rarely seen. Instead, they are merely glimpsed now and then from the prow of a ship from a rocky seashore through the lens of an underwater camera. Who are these giants of the dark seas? How do they hunt? How do they eat? How do they breathe? It is a mystery. After all, how can you know about an animal hidden from view? You must rely on clues as scientists do. Clues left behind by the creatures themselves a tentacle, an eye, pieces found around the world, found over centuries by whalers and sailors and people walking the beach. You examine each piece, questioning and guessing, wondering at the weirdness of these baffling beasts. Beasts we call... Giant squid. Bum, bum, bum. Here are its tentacles, too, curling and twisting and thirty feet long, waiting for a passing fish, another squid, anything swimming by. The tentacles seize their prey. They surround their thrashing meal. They latch on with powerful sucker-studded clubs. Row after row of suckers, suckers ringed with saw-like teeth that rip into skin and hold on tight. Eight coiling arms join in, pushing the prey to its The beak, bone-hard and parrot-like, it sits in the center of those eight slithering arms, protruding from the creature's mouth, rotating from side to side, ripping apart prey. And what lies behind the beak? A dark hole, the mouth, and inside the mouth, a terrifying tongue-like ribbon of muscle covered with sharp, tiny blades that slice, grind, file the food into a pasty sludge, easy for a giant squid to digest. Look at that beak. In the murk, an eye, round, unblinking, some as big as soccer balls, the biggest eyes on the planet. Why? So it can spy pinpoints of light in its pitch black world, glints, flickers, set off by tiny creatures, jellyfish and krill, disturbed by a, driving, a diving sperm whale. Their flashes create a shimmering outline, faint, so faint. But 
not too faint for the big-eyed squid. The outline is a warning. Time to flee. Sucking water into its body and squirting it out, the creature jets away. Danger past, alone once more in the murky depths, the creature floats, rising and falling at will. The squid is pinkish purple now, but any second it could change color. Maybe pale yellow, maybe silvery gray, maybe red with brown stripes, or orange with black dots. Which colors? Which patterns? It's another mystery. And why do they change? Maybe to impress a mate. Maybe to scare Mr. Fitzpatrick. Where does the female squid lay her eggs? How long does it take them to hatch? More unanswered questions. Still more mystery. Yet one day, a baby giant squid hatches from its egg. Teensy. Tiny just two inches long, in the ocean. It is dangerous to be bite-sized. Watch out for that barracuda, quick. Ink. One of those protective measures that a squid has. Just a page of more ink. off the heater. It's cold in here. It's gone. So on the at, at the end of this book there is a great kind of drawing of a giant squid with its fins, its mantle, its funnel, the eyes, the beak, the arms, and the tentacles. Love this book. So we learned a couple things. We learned that giant squids have big eyes that don't blink so that they can see the little glimmers of light that, that get uh, reflected off of jellyfish, krill, different kind of food sources. It uses ink as a defense mechanism to get away from something that would want to eat it. Um, and then it's got a, a strong beak like a parrot. Uh, those are the, the, a few things that I learned. I wonder what you learned. All right, have a great day.